take a look at these images of the far north of both Russia and Canada. Obviously in the wintertime it gets very cold here, most of the time it's well below freezing, but there is a window of time throughout the year that these places can get extremely warm. And for context, a lot of these locations are at the same latitude as Antarctica, which never gets above freezing. So what exactly is going on here and why does it get so warm this far up north? Well, these regions are known as subarctic. It's a middle ground between the true polar regions and more humid continental climates further south. This map here highlights temperature variance, so how much the weather changes throughout the year, and these subarctic regions have the most extreme temperature variations. So I did some research into this topic, and I found two reasons people often cite for this change. One is that they have a continental climate, so they're pretty far away if you look at Russia, Canada, from any ocean, which could provide moderating effects on the temperature. And the second commonly referenced point is having long daylight hours in the summertime. We're talking roughly 20 hours of continuous sunlight during June and July here. However, to me, neither of these fully explain why Northern Canada, Russia experienced these extreme, relatively extreme heat waves when Antarctica doesn't. After all, Antarctica is also a large continental landmass, similar to Canada, Russia, and it has the same permanent daylight during the summertime, yet it's always well below zero. So I found the real explanation comes down to the shape of the landmasses and their composition. If you take a close look at North America, you can see a continuous stretch of relatively flat, unobstructed land that goes from the Gulf of Mexico all the way up to the Arctic Ocean. This can act as a highway that sweeps warm, humid air from the Gulf of Mexico all the way up into Canada. And that explains why only these select islands way up in the Arctic Ocean can avoid many of these heat waves, because they do benefit from the moderating effects of the Arctic Ocean. But just further south into Russia, Canada, that's not the case. I should also mention that there's no mountains here. If there was, that would also act to block humid air from the south and make the whole region more stable and cooler. So that's a big part of it, but the final piece is the composition of the land. More specifically, we're talking ice sheets here. We all know that Antarctica is covered by a gigantic ice sheet, and these subpolar regions have no such cover. And the ice itself cools off the surrounding land. It increases the solar reflectivity of the land, ensuring that even during the summertime 24 hours of sunlight, the land is just never able to be heated up enough by solar radiation in the same way it is in Canada and Russia. So in short, Russia and Canada are susceptible to these periods of extreme heat, relatively speaking, due to their geography. They have direct land bridges to warmer areas of the planet that act as highways for heat, with no mountains or ocean to block that activity. And Antarctica is essentially the complete opposite. It is fortified from these warm air masses moving in by a cold ocean current that allows ice to build up on the surface, reflecting solar radiation, making the whole continent even colder and more difficult for warm air to penetrate. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like, and I'll see you guys in the next one.